stocks slid today, commodity prices sank, and gasoline fell what is called the exchange limit. It couldn't fall any more in one day of trading. Now, demand for fuel slipped to the lowest level since June of 2009. Prices could continue to fall in coming weeks. All right, well, let's look at what this means for investors and for the economy. My guests are Kate Warren, investment strategist at Edward Jones and Company. Kate is a certified financial analyst. She's got, also got a doctorate degree, and she's been with Edward Jones since 1997. Also with us, Joseph Tenius. He is a vice president and market strategist at J.P. Morgan Funds, specializing in mergers and acquisitions and capital raising solutions. Great to have you both with us. Thank Let you. me begin with you, Kate. The moves today in the market. What has changed in 24 hours that seems to now have people asking, uh-oh, about commodity prices, uh-oh, about Greece and the euro, and what is going to happen to things such as stocks when we see this big sell-off? What's happened? What's changed? Well, I would say very little has changed. We've got one more piece of information that demand may be weaker for gasoline, that the world economy may be slowing down a little bit. That, of course, means lower commodity prices, which I think we're seeing then. But I really think that investors are trying to read far too much into each little piece of information about what the trajectory or what the future of all of this year, maybe into next year, is going to look like. At the same time, though, as we've seen the sell-off in commodities last week, I think investors began to pay a little more attention to how much risk they were taking in their portfolios and are beginning to say, now's the time perhaps to shift into slightly less risky equities and maybe less risky investments overall. Can we also say, Joe, that this is a time for investors to actually do some real homework and not just look at the headlines, not just say, all right, all commodities go up forever, <laughs> even though we might be in some kind of secular trend, but that they've got to really do their homework and find out what are they investing their money in? Absolutely. I mean, I think today you've had uh, some concerns around so European sovereign debt. There's there's a lot of chatter about uh, the pace of economic growth uh, in the eurozone. There's a lot of chatter about inflation expectations. And what you've seen is just a broad sell-off. You're having sort of this risk-off trade. But the outlook here I think investors need to be focusing on is that you have a combination of these microeconomic tailwinds and macroeconomic headwinds, which are likely to keep multiples bound to a range over the next year uh, and may even create a little bit of volatility in the short run. So you've got opposites colliding a little bit. But hey, what do you think about corporate profits? Because even when we look at those companies in the S&P 500, their reports have been pretty good. Yes, first quarter earnings have come in well above expectations. And in fact, a higher percent of companies have beat expectations in the first quarter than is typically the case. And most companies have said they expect earnings to continue to grow. So while we've got these short-term uncertainties, worries about what's happening today and tomorrow, I think the longer-term trend actually is positive, and investors ought to be using this as an opportunity to add quality companies. The reason is that earnings growth that we were seeing in the first quarter, but also the economy remains on pretty good footing, even though some of the indicators will come in weaker than expected. We always see that at this kind of time in the economic cycle. I can hear the investors saying, all right, she keeps saying quality companies. What kinds of companies or indeed what kinds of industry groups would you be looking at? Well, we'd be looking at large companies with diversified businesses and particularly healthcare and staples as areas that are really lagged behind many other. When you typically see a rebound from a downturn, you see the riskiest stocks and the riskiest investments do the best. And that's already happened. That's already happened. In the last two years, you've seen emerging markets, small capitalization stocks, natural resources, all up more than 150%. Large stocks have done really well. They're up 100%, but that's obviously not as good. So what we're saying is the opportunity looks like it's in these bigger companies that tend to pay dividends, that tend to have dividend growth, which for many investors is a really important characteristic, and they're priced more attractively today. So don't pay so much attention to all these short-term things you're hearing about commodity prices dropping. Instead, focus on the fact that there's some really good opportunities in quality companies out there. Let's pick up, Joe, on something that Kate said having to do with dividends, because with yields on treasuries so low, we're talking about 3% if you mm -hmm. loan your money to the government for 10 years. Is this the time then to look for those companies that can consistently produce and grow dividends? I agree. I do think you should be looking at companies that can pay dividends. I think you should also be looking at growth companies, uh, generally speaking. You know, for instance, Any particular sectors? 
Well, if you were to ask me my favorite sectors in the markets today, I'd probably tell you technology and I'd tell you industrials uh, for a number of reasons. That said, even without mar uh, multiple expansion, there's still an opportunity here in the equity markets on the back of stronger earnings, which you mentioned. Uh, you've had a stellar uh, quarter in terms of earnings releases. Uh, and if anything, that leads us to believe that over the next couple of quarters, we should have also uh, outstanding results. Are we over concerned about the end of quantitative easing part two? I think that's been priced into the markets, to be quite honest with you. Um, but again, this sort of ties into the, you know, the combination of tailwinds and headwinds that are likely to keep multiples bound to a range. I think you're, you're probably going to see a bit of volatility in the short run. Um, that said, there still is opportunity in the equity markets just based on stronger earnings. All right. We've got to leave it there. But I want to thank you very much. Joseph Tenius joining us from J.P. Morgan Funds and Kate Warren joining us from Edward Jones Company. Thank you very much. Appreciate your insights.